Good morning. I'm Alison. Some of you may know that I am passionate about family research. Others, who've known me for a very long time, will know that my maiden name was Lucas. This chart shows my father and grandfathers back to the early 1700s. John at the top in Hemingford Abbots, a lovely village to the east of Huntingdon, and Charles. Time for a move. Alfred was born in Brigstock in Northamptonshire, and then down to London for George, for Edwin, and for Derek. I was born in London too. Here are some photos of them. There's Alfred, the one with the lovely long beard, and behind him is his grandson, Edwin. The photo on the right is of George. Now George was Alfred's son and father of Edwin. Here are two more pictures. There's Edwin, my grandfather in later life, and a picture of my father in his youth. I would like to tell you that I come from a long ancestry of Christian families, but I do not. This is evident from the christening records. Alfred, the one with the lovely long beard, wasn't christened until he was 20 in 1833. He was forgotten about. And since this was before the registration of births, marriages and deaths in 1837, he needed a document to prove who he was as he left Brigstock and came to London to become an engraver like his eldest brother. Though born in Chelsea, where there are good church records, there's no evidence that George was christened or George's children as infants. It seems the visit of the vicar in 1889 to arrange Alfred's funeral brought about some action. As all the children were christened one Sunday a few months later, their ages ranging from adult to five years old. Things were a bit more organised for my father and for me, but we didn't go to church. It was a school friend who invited me to the church youth group when I was 14. Apart from the social side, I was quite happy to come. But it was a sermon some two years later that was pivotal and a passage to which I frequently turn. John 21 verses 15 to 19. When they had finished eating, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you truly love me more than these? Yes, Lord, he said, you know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my lambs. Again, Jesus said, Simon, son of John, do you truly love me? He answered, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said, take care of my sheep. The third time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was hurt because Jesus asked him the third time, do you love me? He said, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my sheep. Being asked if we love Jesus is very personal, perhaps challenging. It is easier, maybe, to talk about the love of God and how we know and experience that. But ask us whether we love Jesus is another matter. C.S. Lewis once said that on the whole, Christ's love for us is a much safer subject to talk about than our love for him. Jesus hands the care of the flock over to Peter. Feed my sheep. The most amazing thing is that in spite of Peter's diffidence, he is still given the responsibility of caring for the flock. Life can have success, but also failures, especially in our Christian walk. Yet in spite of that, and even if I struggle at times to say, Lord, you know I love you, I still have the opportunity of following him, being asked to serve him, and to love like he does.